Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about privileged and non-privileged instructions in computer organization course, computer architecture course, computer organization and architecture course. It is one of the important concept in these courses. Generally, a system can be operated in two modes. First one can be called as privileged mode and the second one can be called as non-privileged mode. Because of that two modes, we can say that a system can be operated in dual mode. Why a system can be operated in dual mode? For security purposes, unauthorized persons cannot access that information from that system. For that purpose, a system can be operated in two modes. User <coughs> privileged mode can also be called as kernel mode, whereas non-privileged mode can also be called as user mode. Okay, user mode can also be called as non-privileged mode. In that user mode, we are executing the user applications such as MS Word, MS PowerPoint, and MS Excel. Whereas, privileged mode can be also be called as kernel mode. In that mode, we are executing the operating system functionalities such as resource accessing, ORR, I.O. devices accessing, memory accessing. So, these type of functionalities are executed only in the kernel mode. In the user mode, the mode bit value is equal to 1. In the kernel mode, the mode bit value is equal to 0. Okay. Suppose we want to change from user mode to kernel mode, the mode bit value can be changed from 1 to 0. Suppose we want to change from kernel mode to user mode, the mode bit value can be changed from 0 to 1. The process of switching from one mode to another mode can also be called as contest switching. Contest switching is nothing but switching from user mode to kernel mode or a kernel mode to user mode. Why this type of switching can be done? We have to know about by using one example. Suppose we want to read a file that is stored in the hard disk. After reading the file, we want to modify that file. Okay, this is our simple example. Okay, first, <coughs> a system by default, it is in user mode. In that user mode, user process executing. User process executing is nothing but reading the file that is stored in the hard disk and I want to update that file. For that purpose, we have to generate a system call. Here, system call is nothing but we are uh, reading the file that is stored in the hard disk. For that purpose, uh, a system call such as a read system call we have to use. Okay. Whenever a read system call is used, we have to read the file that is stored in the hard disk. Hard disk is nothing but I.O. device to access that I.O. device, we want to use the kernel mode because 
IO devices are controlled by the kernel mode. Okay, for that purpose, we have to switching from user mode to kernel mode because user directly does not access the IO devices. For that purpose, we have to change the system mode from user mode to kernel mode to read the file that is stored in the hard disk. For that purpose, it generates an interrupt called as trap. While processing the interrupt, the system can be change the mode bit value from 1 to 0. That means we have to change the system mode from user mode to kernel mode. Okay, once the mode of the system can be changed from user mode to kernel mode, it can access the hard disk and reading the information, whatever it is there in the file, that can be modified by using the right system call. After <coughs> performing the right system call, again the system can be written from kernel mode to user mode. Okay, that means mode bit value can be changed from 0 to 1 after right system call is executed. Okay, in this way the system can be changed from user mode to kernel mode, kernel mode to user mode. Okay, initially a system can be there in by default in user mode. In that user mode, user process executing such as reading a file that is stored in the hard disk. For that purpose, we have to use a system call such as read system call. To read the file that is stored in the hard disk, compulsory user mode is not accessing the hard disk. At that time, we have to change the system mode from user mode to kernel mode. For that purpose, it generates an interrupt called as trap. While processing the interrupt, the system can be, system mode can be changed from user mode to kernel mode. Once the system is in kernel mode, it can access the hard disk and read the file that is stored in the hard disk and and update the file by executing the right system call. Once the updation can be, that is modification can be successfully completed, again we have to change the mode value mode from kernel mode to user mode. Okay, <coughs> that is changing the user mode to kernel mode, that is changing from mode bit value 1 to 0. Changing the mode from kernel mode to user mode is nothing but changing the mode bit value 0 to 1. The process of switching from user mode to kernel mode and kernel mode to user mode is called as contest switching. Okay, that means changing the mode bit value 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 is nothing but contest switching. Okay. Next, we can go for another example. Suppose a customer X is there. A customer X is there. He can go to the bank to withdraw some money. Okay. So, X person enters into the bank and take the withdrawal form. Okay. And fill the withdrawal form in user mode. Okay. Take the withdrawal form and fill the 
withdrawal form that can be done only in the user mode. After filling the withdrawal form, it can give to the bank employee. The bank employee can open the customer X person account that can be operated in kernel mode. Then he can withdraw some money from X account and give the money to the X account by changing the mode from kernel mode to user mode. Okay, this is one more example. Next, the third example is suppose I want to display so 2 plus 5 that is equal to 7. Okay, initially system can be there in the user mode. In the user mode, he can open the, he can execute the uh, simple application such as 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. Okay, this result can be displayed on the monitor. Okay, initially the user in the, user is there in the user mode. To display that result, he can access the monitor. User directly does not access the monitor. Monitor can be operated only in the kernel mode. At that time, user can change from the mode, user mode to kernel mode. Once he is reaching the kernel mode, he can access the monitor and display the result. Once the result is displayed, he can change from kernel mode to user mode. Okay. These are the three applications of privileged and non-privileged <laughs> instructions. Now, we have to see some differences between privileged and non-privileged instructions. First point, privileged instructions are nothing but the instructions that are executed only in the kernel mode. Okay, whatever the instructions that are executed in the kernel mode, that instructions can be called as privileged instructions. Next, whereas non-privileged instructions, the instructions that are executed in the user mode, that instructions can also be can call can also be called as non-privileged instructions. This is the simple definition. Next, next point: privileged instructions are runs only in the kernel mode, whereas non-privileged instructions are runs in the only user mode. Suppose we are in the privileged mode, we want to execute a non-privileged instruction at that time we can get a runtime error. Next, suppose we are there in the non-privileged mode, we want to execute a privileged instruction at that time also we can get an runtime error. So that means we are in one mode we want to execute another mode instruction. At that time, we can get the runtime error. Next one. In the privileged mode, we are executing only operating system related programs such as accessing the uh, I.O. devices, accessing the resources, accessing the memory. So, these are the operating system related programs. To execute that operating system related programs, we have to use privileged instructions. Next, to execute the user applications such as MS Word, MS PowerPoint, MS Excel, these applications comes under non-privileged instructions. Next, 
we are see some examples for parallelizer instructions ibo instructions and halt okay ibo instructions whatever the ibo instructions are there that is read instruction write instruction halt instruction these instructions are called as parallelizer instructions that is the instructions that are used for accessing the ivo devices that instructions are called as ivo instructions to access the ivo devices we have to use kernel mode so that only ivo instructions and halt instructions are examples for parallelized instructions <coughs> next one set the times okay to set the uh, times we have to use parallelized instruction next turn off all the interrupts okay these are the examples for parallelized instructions next what are the <coughs> examples for non parallelized instructions reading the status of the processor that means reading the status of the cpu okay reading the status of the cpu is nothing but what are the status bits of the cpu so that are nothing but reading the status of the cpu reading the system time whatever the time that is there in the system to read that system time we have to use non privileged instruction generate any trap instruction so trap is nothing but in interrupt to generate any interrupt we want to use non privileged instructions so these are the some differences and examples for privileged and non privileged instruction the same video is also utilized for user mode and kernel mode in the operating system course okay so this is the summary of privileged and non privileged instructions we are asking some uh, <coughs> some small questions okay what is privileged mode privileged mode is nothing but kernel mode what is non privileged mode non privileged mode is nothing but user mode what is the mode bit value in the user mode that is 1 what is the mode bit value in the kernel mode that is 0 what is contest switching so system mode can be changed from user mode to kernel mode and kernel mode to user mode is nothing but contest switching so these are the some important uh interview questions that can be asked from the video i hope all of you understanding this video if you have any doubts please put your doubts in the comment section i will try to clarify your doubts if you really understanding this video please subscribe my youtube channel so divela srinivas rao after subscribing my youtube channel click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my youtube channel don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel thank you thank you one and all for watching this video